The immortal pen of James Fenimore Cooper brings you thrilling tales of excitement. Blazing action on the early American frontier. Stirring adventures filled with the daring and courage of Hawkeye, first of the long rifles, and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. Wagon go this way. Owls don't hoot in the daytime. Oh, Hawkeye! Well, you sure had me surrounded. And I gotta admit my scalp was tingling. I thought I'd better teach you a lesson. You're moseying along down the trail like you're in the middle of a dream. Well, I guess I was daydreaming a bit, but there's no harm in that, is there? I understand there's been peace in these parts since I left, and that was more than six months ago. Hungry bear, not read peace treaty. Chingachgook! Greetings to old friend, but next time dream in teepee, not in forest. Look at here, stop rubbing it in. Even if I was dreaming, you two could have ghosted up on me on any trail. Say, that's a mighty pretty basket. Uh, figure on taking up sewing? We not see you for a long time. You find squaw? <laughs> well, I gotta admit that's what brought me back this way. I'm gonna get married. I found me a right nice place in Dega Valley. I cleared me a farm, built a snug little cabin. Say, what are you two doing away from the fort? There ain't no trouble, is there? Oh, nothing that should worry you, Mike. The colonel sent us out to look for a wagon of rifles and powder that he was expecting from headquarters. It's a full day overdue. <laughs> White chief think maybe driver get lost. We follow wagon trail. The same way I'm headed. Mind if I tag along for a spell? It won't make you late for your wedding. Uh, Daniel Green's cabin's right in the trail. This is for Burl. Little Burl? Why, the last time I saw her, she wasn't big enough to thread a needle. She's 17, Hawkeye. Year older than her ma was when Daniel took her to White. While tongue talk of new things, trail get old. <laughs> He's been scalped. Iroquois. I never cared for snap judgments, Mike. We find wagon. Powder and rifles gone. Now him. Here's where their canoe landed, and with a light load. But other mark is deep. Mean leave with heavy load. Well, that sure explains what happened to your powder and guns. Explain nothing. Water leave no trail. Well, what proof do you need? Isn't the Iroquois camp just across the river? When fox run from hunter, leave false trail, not lead to den where young ones are. What he's saying is if Chief Atomi broke the peace, he wouldn't be advertising it like this. <laughs> Take it easy. Iroquois. They come up on a sudden like. You were with the wagon? Yeah. I was riding guard. Back there. Three or four of them devils, they, they dropped on us when we was passing under some trees. That's why we not see moccasin track. Where wagon turned to fort. Daly. What's happened to Daly? He's dead. They took his scalp. Oh, no. Once the wagon had stopped, I jumped out and I ran for my life. And then I got hit with a flying tomahawk. And I fell down. 
but I managed to crawl away and hide. And then I, I guess I passed out. I don't understand how come they didn't find me, though. Pure luck. It happens that way sometimes. No, oh, well, my head's all in one piece anyway. Take more than a Iroquois tomahawk to, to keep old Jake off on his feet. <laughs> oh. Pearl's a right nice hand at nursing, and the cabin's just down the road. You would rest there for a while and make sure you're fit. Oh, it's mighty kind of you, son, but I got to get onto the fort. I got my duty to do. Now, don't press your luck, Jake. In your condition, without a rifle, you might not make it to the fort. Yeah, but I got to get to see the colonel. Now that them Iroquois have got guns and powder, they'll have to go on the warpath any minute. Well, you worry about getting your head tended to. We'll worry about the Iroquois. Stay back, Mike. She's waiting for me. Six months. She's been waiting for me. It's better if you remember her the way she was when she said goodbye. Those murder and Iroquois. Be sensible, Mike. You can't do anything by yourself. I'm not thinking of myself. I'm thinking of her. What they did to her. Give me that tomahawk. Young girl would say, tomahawk is not answer to tomahawk. Great Manitou know who kill. He lead us to justice. She would have said that. She would have said it in Bible words. Yeah, that's just the trouble. The settlers quote scripture while them sneaking Iroquois are doing the work of the devil. There's only one way to stop this, with the army. I'm reporting this to the colonel right away. Just a minute, Jake. We're not sure that it was the Iroquois. Well, how much sure do you want to be? Besides, I'm not waiting around for those rattlesnakes to jump me again. Jake! Jake's right. This is a job for the military. Mike, I've known Chief Atomi for a long time. And unless I'm real wrong, he doesn't know anything about this. Who else but the Iroquois could have done it? Some renegade bunch that Chief doesn't know anything about. Get your basket. They shed their blood to help tame this wild land. Now they're at peace. Wind of South. Take them to happy hunting ground. Great Manitou wait for them with smiling face. Hawkeye, King of Skook. Okay, there are three sets of tracks heading towards the cabin, but. Never a sign of them coming back. Those not tracks of people of house. Chingachgook is right. See how deep those heel marks are? Now look. That's how they do. Come from river to cabin, then walk backwards in same tracks. But they not fool us. We go to river, look for tracks. They sure didn't want to take any chances on being followed. Maybe they are same one. Use canoe for powder and rifles. There's only one way to find out. No canoe sign. Evil ones must walk in water. They walked right out again. The water's too deep for walking. They headed that way. They must have felt pretty safe at this point. 
Looks to me like they doubled back to the powder wagon. And the devils paddled into their own territory. Iroquois didn't make these tracks. They were wearing Iroquois moccasins. The Iroquois know this river too well to walk off where it's too deep. Besides, I've never known of Indians who would go through all this kind of trouble to cover up their tracks. Right, Chingus Cook? If Indians make attack, not cover up tracks. Then what, what you're saying is... What I'm saying is that not all murder and savages have red skins. We are doubling the sentries. You and Private Edmonds will stand guard at the north gate. Colonel Crady? Yes, Lieutenant. What kind of chingage cooker here, sir? Show them in and uh, prepare your troop for marching. Yes, sir. We better get going, Colonel. The Iroquois might be scouting settlers right now. We'll leave as soon as I hear Hawkeye's report. I suppose he's told you what's happened. Yes, and we're marching full force on Chief Otomi's village. And Jake's like a lot of people. He gets half the facts and does a whole lot of wrong. Are you disputing what he's reported? Well, how can he? Wasn't I set on by Iroquois myself? Colonel, the tracks we found around that cabin were left by white men. Are you sure? Nobody in all forest reads sign like Hawkeye. Maybe I can't read signs so good, but there's that Iroquois tomahawk that you found in that there cabin. An ammunition wagon stolen, a driver killed, two women and a man scalped. An Iroquois tomahawk. No, Hawkeye. That's more evidence than the tracks of white men. But if I'm right, you'll plunge the whole frontier into the fire. And no Indian tribe will ever trust us on keeping a treaty again. You've been right before, Hawkeye, I grant you. But I can't just stand idly by. Chief Atomi has always been reasonable. If any of his braves are guilty, he'll turn them over to us. Oh, that's a laugh. Why, Atomi is guilty himself. If the treaty could be saved, so would hundreds of lives. Hawkeye, I'm giving you and Chingisgook 24 hours. If your investigation doesn't clear the Iroquois by then, we march. Full battle order. Thanks, Colonel. to shine upon you, brother. Well, if you want to keep your countenance shining, you'd better not sing so loud. Well, brother, I admit me voice isn't as sweet as a nightingale. This Iroquois land. You sing, they take scalp. Me red brothers are welcome to whatever locks I may have. If only I can help them to abandon their heathenish ways. A few days ago, you could sing songs and save souls till Judgment Day. And that's just what I'm doing. Our red brothers must be prepared for that happy day. Now, look here, Mr. Uh, Finnegan. Brother Finnegan. Brother? Brother Finnegan, my friends and I are on a mission. We've got just 24 hours to keep the Army and the Iroquois from being at each other's throats. If we fail, the life of anyone found around here will be worth less than nothing. Thank you for your concern, brother. But in carrying the word, I've learned to cast out all fear. Oh, a small token of my, of my thanks for your warning. Goodbye, uh, Brother Finnegan. Good day, brother. Peace be with you, brother. I travel the wilderness, too. All right, you can cut out the psalm singing. Even if it was good, I wouldn't like it. What did you do with the wagon? I hid it back there in the bush. Well, how you doing, Jake? You're in trouble, Sam. You've got to keep the guns and powder in your wagon a little while longer. And out of sight. A couple of white men and an Indian told me our little war is being delayed. They was heading toward the Iroquois village. Yeah. Those men you was talking to. One of them's Hawkeye. Hawkeye? then that war has got to start now. I don't see how it can. Chief Otomi trusts Hawkeye. He'll listen to him. Now, just supposing, Jake, an Iroquois is shot by a white man, and Chief Otomi gets to hear about it while he's 
powwow in with Hawkeye. And yeah, what do you suppose had happened then? The end of a beautiful friendship. And war drums would start beating, now wouldn't they? When I was coming over here from the fort, I saw a hunting party. No more than three Iroquois braves. You have my blessing, brother. Be on thy way. Hawkeye, okay, speak truth. This Iroquois tomahawk. But Iroquois not kill. Tommy, you're a great chief. Come with me and tell this to the Yankees colonel. Tommy have counsel with Yankees chief under sky, in forest, not behind walls of fort. I'm afraid there's no time for me to fetch him here. The shooting's due to start any minute. Yes. Who kill? White man. We hunt, see white man on hill. Tonkawa stop, wave. White man cry out, Iroquois dog. Then he shoot, kill Tonkawa. Death of Tonkawa. Death of treaty paper. Listen to Tommy. They may be the same evil white men that we're after. Stay off of the warpath, at least until you've met the colonel. No counsel now, Hawkeye. White men say Iroquois dog. Iroquois dog bite deep. Hawkeye, Chingichku, you come in sign of peace. Iroquois law say, go in peace. Go! Iroquois or no Iroquois, we'd better get out of here while we still have our hair. You're right, Mike. They're just itching for an excuse to tomahawk us. Let's move easy toward the river. Act afraid. Maybe forget Chief's orders. Take our scalps. Just ignore them, no matter what they do. Iroquois start war dance. Yeah, they'll be on the warpath soon. We've got to warn the colonel. I was beginning to think you was a victim of your own bushwhacking, Jake. Well, I took time to follow the hunting party into the village. Can't you hear the war drums? If I know anything about Injuns, they've stirred themselves into giving us a real nice price for our wares. Yeah. Let's go and get the stuff out of the wagon. I thought you said a Tommy would take care of Hawkeye and his friends. Well, sure he did. Then who are they? Hey. That Hawkeye's smarter than I figured. Eh, yeah, too smart. He's the only one that's been able to figure out it was white men who massacred them people back at the cabin. Oh, well, what are you fussing about? There ain't no names on moccasin tracks. There's a blame good chance he'll be able to piece all this together. Even to figure out that hit on the head you gave yourself wasn't done by the Iroquois. Yeah? Well, he ain't gonna live that long. Jake, you can't hit anything at this distance. Knowing Hawkeye, you'll never get the second chance to shoot. Well, what difference does it make? Nobody's gonna give me a second chance to explain, either. Hey, ain't they gonna have to land down at Henderson's Narrows? Not so far from here? Well, sure, on account of the rapids. Then let's get back to the wagon and pick up our bows and arrows and moccasins. I can't think of a better place for them to walk smack into a couple of murdering Iroquois. 
Now you've got the answer. All right, here they come. That's right, Mike. If you'll check those moccasins, I'm sure they'll fit the prints back there at the cabin. You? Why are you? Let's keep the punishment legal, Mike. We give to Iroquois or we give to White Chief? On Iroquois land, Yankees have no chief. All white men now die. But Toby, I'm your friend. I've got powder and guns. Plenty of them back there in my wagon for you. Evil men get rich by starting wars, Chief Atomi. I can prove that these are the men who stole the guns and powder, murdered the people in the cabins, and Tonkawa. Hawkeye lies. He's trying to prevent you from having guns to protect yourselves with. Him kill Tonkawa. But I had nothing to do with it. You same as Skiller. Both men die in Iroquois fire. They're my prisoners, Atomi. They'll be tried and punished by white man law. I give you my word on it. White man's law, soft. Hawkeye give word. Word of Hawkeye is straight as tree in forest. It is well. We smoke pipe of peace with white brother. Yankees punished evil ones. We have peace. Yes, Chief. For only in peace can both our peoples prosper. War bring nothing but evil to land. This is the way all differences should be settled, with a pipe of peace. Join us again at this same time next week for another of James Fenimore Cooper's gripping tales of the early American frontier. Another exciting adventure of Hawkeye and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans.